Hello, everyone. This is Jeremy Fry. I am the senior pastor at Advent Lutheran Church in Melbourne, Florida. This is my daily devotional podcast. It is Thursday, October 14th, 2021. Uh, for this uh, month of October, uh, we're picking out, or I'm picking out uh, random scripture verses uh, in honor of Martin Luther, who is a reformer back in the 1500s and uh, the founding father of the Lutheran Church, who believed, and as I believe, that the Word of God is the living, breathing Word of God that speaks to us today uh, differently than it spoke to us yesterday and differently. They will speak to us tomorrow. So uh, I love just picking random scripture, either from there's a bunch of apps you can do or websites uh, or just thumbing through the Bible as well. Today's scripture comes from uh, from one of the websites called mydailyverse.net, and it is Second Timothy, Second Timothy Four eighteen, so Second Timothy chapter four verse eighteen. For those who don't know Timothy, there's First and Second Timothy. These are letters written from Paul, the Apostle Paul, uh, who came after the the disciples, um, and uh, he was originally persecuting uh, Christians, and then had a vision uh, of Jesus, and then he became one of the greatest champions of the Christian faith, the followers of Jesus. And Timothy is one of, uh, of of kind of his proteges of one of his uh, interns or uh, however you want to say it, uh, and and Paul was uh, out doing things and Timothy was out doing things, and they would write each other and that's one of the two of the letters that we have is First and Second Timothy. Now Second Timothy was written by Paul when he was arrested uh, again uh, and put in a dungeon. Uh, uh, that's not always how it happened. When a lot of times, when Paul was arrested for for spreading the good news of Jesus Christ, so uh, a lot of times he was put in like a house arrest or uh, you know living in a in not horrible situation, but they c- couldn't leave that kind of stuff. This one was bad. He was actually in a dungeon. He was shackled to a um, a common criminal, and he was just. It was just miserable, miserable, miserable time. And he wanted to write Timothy and to, to first because he was lonely. Uh, and then also uh, Paul is very concerned about the welfare of the churches during the time of persecution under Nero, who put him in jail. Um, and then he also wanted to get a message to the church of, uh, to a church of Ephesus um, through uh, Timothy as well. So that's kind of what uh, the, the letter of Timothy is about, First and Second Timothy. They're pretty short. You can sit down and read them in no time. Uh, and this particular scripture is the very end of Timothy, uh, Second Timothy, uh, kind of his final greetings, Paul's final greetings. Uh, and here's what it says. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and bring me to safety to his heavenly kingdom. To God be the glory ever and ever. Amen. As you can imagine, if he was in, um, if he was in the jail at the time in, in a horrible dungeon, shackled with criminals and other people, he can imagine how lonely he was, how desperate he was, um, and he held on to that hope of knowing that uh, that situation uh, will not last forever. You know, even if he dies in that dungeon, he knows that his hope and faith and trust is in God and that God will come and bring him to God's kingdom. Uh, and that's the kind of faith uh, Paul had. Um, and it's, and throughout his trials and tribulations, a lot of great work was done, but um, he suffered for it as well. Uh, but that's kind of the hope that we all put in uh, our our Lord and Savior. You know, we have our ups and downs as well. Life here on earth um, just doesn't seem to make sense at times and doesn't seem to be fair at times. And there's some sad, dark times. Um, and it's like we're in a dungeon. And uh, But we 
our only hope is uh, putting our faith and hope and trust in God, uh, knowing that this is not uh, the end of everything, but just the beginning uh, of uh, of a future with God in heaven, uh, spending all eternity uh, with not only God, not only with our Lord and Savior, but with everyone who have gone before us and everyone who's going to go after us. And uh, that's what we put our hope and faith and trust in. As I said, I um, this week is the week that my mom passed away 11 years ago. She was in hospice care at this moment 11 years ago. And uh, I, it, it still breaks my heart every day that she isn't around and able to talk to her. Um, but I have my hope that I'll see her again. Uh, and uh, and that is uh, where, I, uh, where I put my trust, even though it's hard, even though it doesn't help much right now, here, now. Um, that is the hope I cling to. And unfortunately, this week I've had a couple other really, really hard things happen um, in life. Um, a former parishioner and a, just a wonderful, faithful, spirit-filled person um, is <sighs> passed away of leukemia. And uh, his name was Dennis Broughton. And uh, Dennis was <laughs> was one of the smartest people I've ever known in my entire life, but also the ability to relate to anybody. And he always had a smile on his face. He always had this unbelievable spirit-filled energy. Uh, he could calculate um, budget spreadsheets in his mind in no time. Like he could just add numbers and multiply numbers and no numbers. Like you, you just, I couldn't believe it. But at the same time, he was probably one of the best Sunday school teachers, faith formation leaders I've ever had with young kids, with confirmation kids, with you name it. Uh, he was able, no matter what age they were, he was able to tell a story or do things that, would, uh, that any age can understand, or that certain age can understand. And he got on the floor with the little ones, and, and, uh, but his analogies and, and the way he could, he could teach faith formation about life and faith was just unbelievable. Just, uh, just a wonderful, wonderful man of faith. And, um, and uh He's truly going to be missed. And, you know, he was 62 years old. He just retired from the gas and oil business. I uh, had his kids in youth group, and um, they're in their 20s now. And uh, the world, th this world, right now, uh, the world we're living in is a, is, is it's just, <laughs> it, it, the world is lost. We've lost a great man of faith and a beacon of God's light. And this world is worse without him. But I put my hope and faith and trust uh, in, in that. So that's, that's where we are. Anyway, and sorry, I'm just getting a little um, emotional as we do in these situations. Uh, and then my wife has a co-worker teacher who has been on a ventilator for 21 days due to COVID symptoms. She couldn't get the um, vaccine due to um, health issues. The doctor said it wouldn't have been good for her. Um, it probably would have caused uh, um, major issues, but now she has it and and uh, can't get off the ventilator um, and her lungs won't cooperate and it's not looking good. Um, and again, just so much sorrow, so much heartache, so much sadness. And I have no magic words. And when I talk to these families, I tell them I have no magic words. Uh, but the only thing, the only thing that's ever gotten me through this type of stuff is putting my hope and faith and trust in God, knowing that God will come to me and will take me to, to his kingdom uh, and we will be there for all eternity. And I will see Dennis again one day. I'll see my mom again one day. I'll see my grandma and grandpa one day. I'll see, you know, everyone. That's, and we all spend eternity together in love and grace and mercy. Uh, that's, that's where my hope is. Let's pray. 
Oh, good and gracious God, I I pray that that you just be with us, that you walk alongside us in this journey, that we know that you are close when we don't know, when we don't have any answers, when when we can't find any answers, when we're angry, when we're upset, when we're when we're just dumbfounded. We ask that we feel your spirit, we feel your closeness, that we know that you are there for us and that we put our hope and trust in you. Um, help us give that, give that comfort even in times when we cannot be comforted. Help us, watch over us, forgive us, and we thank you for the gift of grace and love that you do give us. We pray all this in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. All right. Thanks for joining me today. Um, We will see you on Monday for a new daily devotion. Take care. God bless.